Welcome. You're listening to Making Relationships Work. We're a company focused on women and their marriage. We lead and teach women just like you how to grow into and access whenever you need to your wise woman self, the part of you who is deeply connected to your purpose, your innate wisdom and your husband and family. We teach women in marriages how to rebuild trust and connection, to work through conflicts no matter how deep, no matter how painful, and to lead your marriage to a place where the two of you experience marriage mastery. This podcast is about learning the systems and techniques that truly work to reconnect you back into your marriage so that you can experience the freedom that comes with a masterful marriage. Since this podcast is totally free, if you're getting tons of value and you want to support us and make sure that you get more of this good stuff, subscribe below and rate and review our podcast today. Now, on to the show. Hello, Women Making Marriages Work Facebook group. Hello, Making Relationships Work, our YouTube and podcast. It's so great to be here with you tonight as we are talking all about a really curious topic. Now, the topic is around how do you look after your mental experience? not your mental safety or not your mental health, but your experience that happens in your brain. And so we can talk and link this to pandemic, but also maybe we're all a bit done with the pandemic for a minute. And maybe what we can talk about is just our everyday experience that we live in, in our body, in our brain, in our emotions. And we can talk about how is that going for you? When we're in the midst of a crisis, be it a marriage crisis, pandemic crisis, any of the crises, our brains start to work in a way to keep us safe. Now, the problem is that the brain's, our brain, yeah, the brain's way of keeping us safe is not always a very nice user experience. It's not always a nice, friendly, loving how are you today experience. It's more of a, you did it wrong, stay over here, everything's terrible, buy lots of toilet paper, you're not okay experience. And so what we need to do is to watch our beautiful brains and how they connect to our experience of the day and realize that we can, to quite a large extent, really lead the way that we feel each and every day by the way that we allow ourselves to think and see and reflect and how those emotions that come up because of that thinking, how they feel, yes? And you might start to say, well, the world is pretty hard right now. Of course, my brain's going to do that. And here, here's the thing. Yes, the world is hard right now. And yes, you can also still have a good experience every day and take clear, appropriate action to do what needs to be done to keep yourself and your community and your kind of county and your area safe, your world safe. Both can coexist. But let's focus on you today and what life is like for you and whether you're allowing yourself to have ease and flow and comfort as you're walking your way through your days. Because many of the women that we're talking to at the moment are not having a good everyday life. And when you don't have a good everyday life, it means that your internal experience, the way that your brain is running, the way your emotions are running, the way that you are seeing and interacting with the world are coming from a place that's pretty unhelpful. And the problem with being a human is that, and particularly a female human who has a husband and a family, which most of you do in this group anyway, is that what your brain is doing in terms of not being or not feeling safe and not feeling calm and not feeling kind and not feeling connected and not feeling secure, your beautiful brain sets the tone for the home. Might not sound very fair, but the research is in and the female sets the cultural tone for the home. So let's think about what your experience is, knowing that when we dial that in, The experience of your family, the experience of your husband changes because of you. Yeah? All right. So if you are going to sleep stressed, if you're going to sleep with the weight of the world on your shoulders, 
And as you go to sleep, you're going through a negative cycle of all the things that aren't working, all of the people that have hurt you, all of the ways in which you're failing, all of the things that aren't okay for you. Then you're going to sleep in a space of stress. And overnight, your body will reset because bodies are amazing. But when you wake up, as you start to come into consciousness, do you know what happens? Your brain starts scanning and it starts looking for where you last left your thoughts and it starts looking to say, am I okay today? Am I okay? I can't remember. I've been asleep. So let me just boot this operating system up and go looking for what I was thinking about last time I was conscious, last time I was awake. And it goes and it picks up the thoughts where you last left them, which means that you step into a new fresh day with yesterday's stress. And you might say, well, it's justifiable. I needed to do that. This is what keeps me safe. I don't know how to do this better anyway. And this is just how I do it. And no, I don't like it, but also I don't know how to do anything different. And so I'm here today to talk about creating a different mental experience so that you don't have to live in this pain and bring it into every day over and over again. Because essentially, you're setting a cultural tone in your home, which leads to a lower level of energy and security for your family. And also just this kind of heavy weight that's on them. And you are not responsible for all of their experiences. Yes. All right. But also, you have the greatest opportunity to set the tone and lead by example. Yeah? Can we all agree on that? Now, the caveat I do have is if you have dependents, then yeah, you're super responsible here. Yes? But also, let's not put too much pressure on you because that's not helpful either. So if we're talking about your experience and it's really hard every day, then what we know for sure is that you're missing a key puzzle piece to know how to do it differently or better. Because if you knew how to do it better, you would. Of course you would. What you're doing essentially is wearing muddy shoes in a beautiful white room. The muddy shoes are that negative rumination, mental depression-y, anxiety-based, stress-laden set of thinking feeling and behaviors and they're in this beautiful white room and so you're clomping around you're leaving mud everywhere do you see that that is what it feels like to live in a home with you and you're watching your parents leave mud everywhere in what could be something really beautiful and so you are like well yeah I do that and yeah I don't want to do that but also don't you know how stressed I am and I've got no no support and my husband isn't loving me very well and I've got this stress over here and this stress over there. So of course I have to have mud on my shoes. I'm an adult, adults have mud. And I'm here to tell you every adult has mud, but not every adult tracks it through that beautiful white room. And what I want to talk to you about is how do you have a room without so much mud? Because we're not trying to get rid of the mud altogether. This is life. This is, (laughs) there's mud. But if you're tracking it through your house and you can't get out of the mud every day, then that's not a good life for you. That's not a good life for your husband. That's not a good life for your kids. Let's clean the boots. So how do we clean the boots? Well, first of all, we talk about what does a mind that doesn't have mud in it look like and feel like? Well, it looks and feels like, isn't life wonderful? I got to listen to my child giggle today and it felt amazing. I got to make a cup of tea just the way I like it. And I got to sit for just a couple of minutes without being interrupted. I am grateful because I look at the house that we've got amidst this really crazy time and we've got somewhere to shelter. And my husband and I are having trouble, but I'm really committed to doing the learning and growing to be able to find my way back to myself and then to find my way back to him. And you see and feel that that is totally different from wearing a pair of muddy shoes. Same situation, same set of problems, but a different way of engaging in the world. And that, my friends, is what we're here to talk about. Because when you're in the muddy shoes in that white room, oh, it's really uncomfortable. It feels mucky. It feels dirty. It doesn't feel good. But when you're in, you've still got the mud because you're going through life. You're a human. There is no, (laughs) there is no age and stage where there's no mud. That's just not the journey of the human. But you can 
use it in a way where you still get to feel good in your everyday life. And if you're looking for how do I do that, then you're in the right place. This is what we're here to do. This is what we're here to talk about. So your job is to just not allow that brain of yours to go where it wants to go down the old familiar path of the mud. It does it because it doesn't know any better. But you get to design what you want to think. You're the boss of you. And so <laughs> I probably told you this before. If you wake yourself up in the morning and before you have chance to go back and pick up that dirty, muddy shoes and put them on, watch something funny. Watch something about humanity that makes you feel good, that makes you expand, that makes you feel like, oh, my gosh, the world is full of hope and possibility. And I've got some things I'm working on that are hard right now, but also I will figure them out because I'm resourceful and kind and good and an amazing human being, which you are, by the way. You're just looking for some new skills. And so then you're going to take that. And you know what you're going to do next? You're going to go onto YouTube and you're going to look up random acts of kindness. You're going to look up cat videos to make yourself laugh. You're going to find the good in the world and immerse yourself in it because when you do that, it's much easier to wear cleaner shoes. You're not avoiding doing the work, right? So watching those videos is not a way to avoid doing what work needs to be done. It's a way of looking after your mental space so that then you can say, right, I've still got these goals. I've still got these problems. I still need to get going, but I'm just not going to wear the messy shoes. Do you see? And so then you might want some resources. So there's a heap of videos in here that tell you all kinds of things. There's even a list of them in the files of all the different ones I've done where I teach skills. Go and watch them. You can also watch my masterclass. There's heaps of free resources in here that will teach you how to see your marriage differently, how to see yourself differently, and how to grow in terms of your internal experience and what your brain is telling you and what that feels like in your body and also in your marriage and what to do about it. So choose what you're watching. Choose how you're showing up. Notice who you are in your world and say, is this somebody I want to be? Am I showing up as the leader I want to be? If I am 80 years old right now and I look back across my life, am I proud of the legacy I've left? If you're not, that's okay. But it's only okay if you decide to do something different now. If you put it off for another year, that's less okay, my friend. Yes? Because when you know better, you need to do better. And that's the call to action today. All right, my darlings, go and watch this, the other videos in here if you're inspired to grow your skills. You've got time. <laughs> also, you can watch the masterclass if you want to as well. Otherwise, you can leave a comment below and tell me all the ways you use every day to commit to not wearing muddy shoes in your white room. Okay? I love you. I'll see you all soon. Stay safe. Much love. Thank you for tuning into today's show. If you're feeling fired up and you're ready to grow and you want to know more about how to do that, here is what I want you to do now. I want you to watch my marriage masterclass. This masterclass will show you how my clients have turned their struggling marriages into thriving marriages, even without their husband's buy-in. How my clients have gone from cycles of poor communication, disconnect and loneliness to being teammates and soulmates with their husbands again even after they've already tried everything. And the proven system my clients use to start transforming their marriages in minutes, not years, because life is too precious to waste one more minute in an unhappy and unfulfilling marriage. So if this is what you're looking for, I want you to click the link below and take a look at my mouth.